thank you. You know, I, I get very emotional when we have this gathering every year because I look out into this room and I see my mom's eyes on so many of the mothers and grandmothers that are here and I just want to say to you um, how deeply grateful I am that you're here and that you are committed to what we are all about. First, I want to thank Congressman Blum, who for decades and decades has been the Armenian American Caucus Chair uh, for the House of Representatives. Along with Congressman Brim for hosting this event tonight, His Eminence Archbishop Troyoyan, uh, thank you so much for um, giving us the honor of having you with us. Uh, to Reverend Father Akhavakian, to Ambassador Markarian, to the representative from Karabakh, Robert Avestian, and to Tom Anders, the CEO and President of United and Genocide. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving us this opportunity. I also want to remember a, a tiny little lady who used to come to this event. She passed away two years ago. And it's appropriate for us to remember her this evening. Right. Yureskin Sarapi Koyan would come to this event because she was devoted to making sure that we wouldn't forget what she went through as one of the very last survivors of the Armenian Genocide. You know, we often come together and we find ourselves in disbelief that somehow 43 different states in this country can recognize the Armenian Genocide but the United States Congress hasn't been able to do it yet. And it's always kind of disheartening. But I read something today that should hearten all of us. Because in the town of Diyarbakar in Turkey, for the very first time, a large crowd gathered at the Metropolitan Municipality Theater to commemorate the Armenian Genocide. And one of the participants said, quote, we grew up with the stories of our grandparents about the massacres of the Armenians. Denialist discourse does not withstand legal and historic screw. A very, very powerful statement being voiced by a modern day Turk. So there's hope. If it can happen in Turkey, it can happen in the Congress of the United States as well. There will come a time in the not so distant future where we can applaud the fact that the Congress has recognized history that we deplore what happened 98 years ago on April 15th, um, and that we want to do everything in our power to prevent it from happening again. You know, I was recently given a book by Vicki Smith Boston. She's an Armenian American. The book is called Victorious Secret. A Conspiracy of Silence. And the pages detail the life of an Armenian-American woman who, just like my own mother, Nancy Kachillian, was born in Fresno in 1915. Her story is like my mother's story, the story of our Armenian family. Smith paints a clear picture of the Armenian neighborhoods in California at a time when fear of continued barbarism in Europe led the survivors to America. 
1915, the Turkish government began their final solution to question, uh, uh, to question of the Armenians. And Smith writes, quote, in March 1915, the New York Times began writing articles of the atrocities committed against helpless Armenians. But despite the sympathy expressed, the world did little to help. The families who survived left their livelihood and legacy back in Armenia, and many flooded this country. Smith's grandmother wrote in a journal entry, and I quote, My youngest years are imprinted with images of destroyed families virtually crawling into our community. Widows were caring for each other and for orphans, and orphans were caring for siblings and friends. It broke my heart to watch these families in despair, but worse yet were the stories they brought with them." Unquote. As refugees, strangers in the U.S., the Armenian immigrants called, quote, genocide Armenians, were recovering from unspeakable tragedy and still confronted with discrimination in their new home. Smith writes that they were, quote, forced to build their own churches because locals accused them of having excessive garlic in their diet, which seeped from their pores and stuck the buildings, unquote. Many Armenian Americans at the time tried to hide their past and their connection to our community. I'm fortunate that my mother was unwilling to hide her Armenian heritage. I'm fortunate, like you, that I was raised in enlightenment. I was raised with a sense of pride in my heritage. I was raised with a sense of courage to challenge the status quo. Yeah, I see. So I think for all of us, our ability to survive, our ability to persevere, has everything to do with the DNA that was given to us by our parents and our grandparents. And we are not unaccustomed to suffering. We are not unaccustomed to prevail. We are not unaccustomed to having to go the extra mile. Because in the end, we know that freedom will win out. That this country will become a better place because we are speaking out about the Armenian Genocide. all those lives that we lost, all those family members, our heritage that we lost, it is really incumbent on us too to be mindful of what is going on in our world today. We have a special obligation to recognize genocide happening in other parts of the world. We have a special responsibility. So, as we look at the Syrian refugees, we need a shelter and food. We cannot ignore it. When we look at the violence going on in Afghanistan, the violence against women going on in Afghanistan, we cannot ignore it. Today, there are victims and families who died in the building collapse in Bangladesh. We cannot ignore it. We carry our family's heritage, we carry our family's DNA, and we carry that ultimate responsibility never to forget our own heritage, but also be protective of others who may suffer the same. Thank you.